Oh, my goodness. We've got some of the guests here already. We're almost about ready with the program. And then <laughs> Harry is not allowed to distract me. Alex is not allowed to distract me either. They're just promenading up and down to hear what the letters are. And here they are, the first letter tonight. Imagine if we could instill in all the youth who are predisposed to violence, terrorism, drug abuse, etc., etc., all those understandings and pearls of wisdom that the older people have, because then it would also make the younger people as mellow and as at ease as the older people. Yeah, a lot of wisdom in that, but how do you, how do you instill that? I don't know. We'll see what the panel's got to say. Second letter tonight. I told my sister, I told my sister that I'd already purchased a, mod a modest gift, but that apparently isn't good enough. Family weddings are coming up. The sister doesn't like what he's bought. She wants more in the last letter tonight. What are they doing in the background? Are they doing anything? They're looking at themselves. I ask all employees not to bring their private lives to work and I expect them to demand that of me. Mm. Diversity in the workforce. We'll see what the panel's got to say. Don't go away. Sweet and Sour coming right up with Alex and Harry and Yay! where are they? And hey. Eddie. And who else is on tonight? Um, Alex, <laughs> Edwina. And Glenn. And Glenn. You'll see. Glenn. Glenn's not here yet. Where's Glenn? Glenn. He's getting makeup. Glenn. Getting makeup. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Hey everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour. Who's on tonight? Glenn's here. Hello, mate. Hi, mate. How are you? I'm really well, but I'm, <laughs> I'm doing better than you. I didn't get washed out of Rottnest over the no, weekend. No, look, uh, it, was, it was certainly... I kept singing on the ferry over. I was like, a three-hour <laughs> tour, a three-hour tour. Did it take longer to get there? Um, no, it was only 30 minutes, and okay. it was a nice ride. It was kind of like being in turbulence on a plane for 30 minutes. And what did you do while you were there? Um, well, it was a school camp. Okay. Uh, what yeah, school so still we rode bicycles around the island. Uh, Mary Poppins flew by. A house landed on a witch. <laughs> uh, lots of really cool stuff. WA has just had a huge storm front mm. come through, and we've got some more tonight as well coming oh, through. You know, it never stops. WA. Wait a while. And by the time <laughs> this goes to where we're probably well into. Winter. Mm. Mm. Oh, I know. There's, there's nothing better to talk about in WA than the weather. Oh, we have is beautiful there? weather. Here. Well, see? See how we easy do. it is we to do. talk about but the weather. But it's true. We have more than 300 days of sunshine on average. Mm. And if you compare it to Perth, Scotland, yeah. they have more than 300 days of cloud cover. Sp but we all know else. Perth, Scotland. You Scotland. know, like, mm, we don't Scotland. talk about it. Alex, yes. when was the last time you were out in the sun? <laughs> Long time between drinks. Hello, love. That's why I'm so white. How are your studies? Oh, my God, I've got an exam on Wednesday and I've got an assignment to do and I've got to do two more assignments. It's just great. But in spite of that, <laughs> you couldn't help but want to come in tonight, right? Yeah, sit on the panel. I know. Well, I, I, I was at uni all day today and we had a lecture, a final lecture before the exam, and I thought, I need a break. So I got my girl, my best girlfriend here, my gal pal Sarah, and we're Sarah's going for been a drink. On the panel. Sarah, Sarah's sitting in the audience. We're going to go Hi, and have Sarah. a wine. Yeah. You're going to go where? Have a wine. Yeah, that sounds like study activity, doesn't yep. it? Go and have a wine. Uni students, that's all you do, students. drink. All right. Eddie, Hi, how Rich. are you, my mate? I do. Great. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks, Mitch. Aren't you looking colourful? Well, we're wearing the same colour, so pink. that's good, Mitch. Thanks for having oh, me back on are. the show. Thanks for sending no, us the on. Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good to have you here. Thank you. Where have you been? What have you done? Have you done any travel? Uh, no, no travel, but um, getting a bit of my yoga on, my yogi on, yoga. doing a bit of om. You always say you've never done any travels. And, you know, in the break you go, oh, yeah, well, I went there and then I went there and then I went there. And How's Cassie going though? When were you last there? Oh no, years ago. I haven't yeah. Cassie for too long. That's my next Too stop. long. When were you there? Oh gosh, too long as well. Probably Little no, Greek okay. Island that oh. my heritage is from and it's been there. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Matsaka? 
<laughs> Who's seen Gogglebox? Harry, have you seen Gogglebox? Uh, With no. Faye and what's the other one? What's no, the Alex? No, no, I haven't Anastasia. seen it. No, it's good. What a logie. It was really? hilarious. It's hilarious. Really? Yeah. What a logie then yeah, clearly is not worth clearly. it. Clearly. Oh, there's my luckies everywhere. How are you, mate? All good. All good, thank you. Gary. All right, tell us about this very depressing market at the moment. Well, everyone should be buying real estate at the moment. I mean, interest rates have never been better. I mean, I don't know why people aren't buying more. Well, I've spoken to some people and they said, oh, no, we're not as low as we could be. Well, and they're holding off. I think we might see another drop in the next two months. Uh, That's good to hear. That's it. But whether it gets passed on... I used to look forward to you coming on and giving a report. <laughs> now I'm not even going to ask you this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's getting it's all depressing. Good. It's all good. This one's called Mellow Yellow. Ooh. Hello, panellists. What is it that makes older people mellow? I'm not complaining. I'm simply writing into your panel to see if they have any pearls of wisdom to share that offer an insight into what is it uh, that people learn with age and experience that makes them far more considered than they are when they're younger. My three boys can simply be a menace when they're all together. And my dad says that he and his brothers were similar when they were young too. He and his brothers are all now the wisest people I know. So I figure if we as a society can discern what it is exactly that people learn as they age and then teach that to youngsters at an early age, what a better, pl what a better world we may be able to produce. Think about it. Imagine if we could instill in all the youth who were predisposed to violence, terrorism, drug abuse, law breaking, arrogance, etc., these understandings and pearls of wisdom that would also make them mellow and more at ease with themselves. So I ask in earnest panellists, what is it that the older, wiser people know that makes them so considered and so mellow? And it comes to us from Peter of Brighton in Victoria. H, what's your take on this one? Are you well, mellow? Yeah, no, I Are think you I, wise? I, think, you consider... I don't know about wise or go, well, probably some people will say I am intense. I know it's very hard to believe, but uh, <laughs> uh, look, I don't think you're actually mellow. What you start to realise is, is that time's in short supply and you just don't get involved in the big arguments that you used to when you were younger. You just tend to gen, let, just to let it roll over and not worry about it as much. I know the case, case always let people win, but you know, you get more engaged when you're younger. You want to, you know, testosterone and fight about everything. When you get old, you go, oh, okay, if that's your opinion, that's great. You're entitled to it. Just move on. Eddie. Just take a chill pill. Come on. Totally agree. I think um, it's um, knowledge and age and being mellow, it's something that can't be taught. It's, it all comes with experience over time. I don't think you can teach time. them either. You can't teach anybody these things. It's Human it's, it's nature ain't going to change, yeah, is it? Yeah, trial and error. So once you learn something, oh, no, 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 don't like the way that feels, you, you know how to roll with it in the future and you, you, you mellow out from things that you don't want to get involved in or things that you do want to. But I think it's something that comes with age and you can't teach kids. We learn by pain because it agree. reinforces it in there. Yep. It, you, as, yep. as many times as you will say something to someone, they won't pick it up until they're ready. Okay. And when you're ready, the teacher will appear. That's and what you, the Chinese And you've got to be careful not to be a dream stealer to the young people because sometimes you can give them the advice being older, but actually where you are today is the sum total of all the mistakes you made. So sometimes you've got to not it's be a dream stealer. Process. That's it. Alex? So I've had a lot of pain. Oh. So I've learned. Works for some, <laughs> not for everybody. I'm, I'm sorry about that. It was just an accident. I'd spilled the coffee. Anyway, I, I just thought about Ant Story when I, when Gary was reading that. You thought about what? Ant Story, that movie, Ant Story. Yeah. Um, because, you know, how they all want to go to Utopia. Yeah. And I thought, well, it sounds like you want a Utopia because it's not going to happen. Is that Zeus story? It's all Why about... Happen? No, because it's all... When people are young, of course they're going to be, like, crazy, especially little boys. How can you control boys? And, um... Yeah, no, it's all through Lovely experience. Notion, we all... We all You've got to learn through experience. Um, I think there is a way. Uh, and uh, I refer you to... Uh, there's a famous documentary made by a filmmaker called Stanley Kubrick called A Clockwork Orange. Uh, and in that documentary, uh, he explores exactly how we can take control of the youth of today. Uh, and I feel like, just like animals, we could microchip. Um, young people and feed them signals to make them not do the things we don't want them to do. Um, we have the technology, why aren't we using it? I would vote for Bill Shorten if he was going to bring that in. <laughs> I don't think so. That is amazing. Amazing. On the panel, isn't it? Oh, oh, come on. Amazing. Who's come been to a wedding? Who's been to a wedding? I disagree with everybody. Sorry. You haven't been to a wedding recently? I have, yep. We're going to a wedding when we come back, yes. so don't go away. And we're going to talk about what do we take to a wedding and what's appropriate. Yes.
Don't go away. More of sweet and sour. See you soon. What do we take at a wedding? Getting in touch with Sweet and Sour is easy. Just head to sweetandsour.net.au to send us a letter. And while you're there, why not check out our past episodes? Plus, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And for a behind-the-scenes look at Sweet and Sour, check us out on Instagram. Any good? Yep. Risotto we're talking about. And for every letter writer, we're going to send you to the movies courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. And the movie we're sending you to this week is what? Queen of the Desert. Oh, oh wow. She was paying attention. Nicole Kidman. <laughs> I'm excited. Nicole Kidman. Wow. Hasn't she just got oh. one expression? <laughs> <laughs> she really like just her. makes the most out of that. I uh, like our Nicole. Intensity. Yeah, I yeah. like our Nicole too. Oh. Dear Mitch and panel, <laughs> weddings are a time for wonderful celebrations and my niece's forthcoming nuptials are no exception. I live in Perth and the wedding is in Sydney where she lives, although I can't afford it, Family is everything in my mind and I'll be sacrificing some of my savings to get to Sydney, stay at a good hotel that's close to all the venues and I was planning to stay there the, the entire week over all the pre-wedding parties, the wedding, farewell breakfast for all the guests the day after the big event and so on. It's costing me a good deal. My growing problem is that my sister, whose daughter is getting married, asked me last week what will I be giving as a present to the couple and then presumed to suggest that cash would be appreciated. Yeah. Enough to cover the expense of having me as a guest and additionally a significant contribution to help them start life together, despite them having lived together for the past three years. I'm besides myself. I know they'll be struggling with money. I know I'll be struggling with money just to get there. My sister has put a complete dampener on me travelling to Sydney. Now I feel that I don't want to go. I love my niece dearly. I told my sister that I had already purchased a modest gift, but that apparently isn't good enough. I feel conflicted, inadequate, and I don't know if I'll regret not going or, for that matter, even going. What are your thoughts here? Please, Lorraine of Westminster in WA, and we're going to Glenn first. Go or not go? Uh, look, I think that you're being really stingy here. Um, this is maybe one or two of the only times that your um, is it sister's daughter is going to get married in her life. Um, so I think you should be giving them as much as you possibly can. In fact, here's what I'm suggesting. I think you should start a possible campaign um, because I think that's the way to raise funds because why limit your money earning potential to the people who are coming to the wedding. Why not put that on Facebook as well? Why not tweet that all throughout the Twitterverse? Why not Snapchat it on Instagram? I think there's more money that can be made with a possible camper. I think she should be giving more, I really do. I don't care that she's, you know, <laughs> spending a lot to get to Sydney. Do you reckon Lorraine would take that advice, Alex? Nope. If I was you. Here's some advice that you're gonna take though, I'm sure of it. If I was you. What do you mean, Gary? Nothing. Let's see what you've got. If I was you, I would give some excuse and I'd um, take that money that I was going to spend to go to Sydney and to stay in a hotel and because it's going to that'll be over a thousand dollars right there. And I'd go on a holiday. I'd go to Bali or something just and just give some excuse that you can't make it. Is like, he going to regret not your going sister's to his, niece? Yeah. Is he going to regret not going to his niece's? No, wedding? but you'll see it all on like like Glenn was saying. You'll see it on Facebook and you'll get photos and Facebook it's like live. it's like. I think that's she doesn't want you to go. Send, send it. No, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't Being go. Being spirited, mm. I'd go. Eddie, what would you do? I think, yeah, I think you need to go. I think it's something that only happens once or twice in a lifetime for this niece of yours. Uh, regardless of what the issue is with your sister, the finances, it is only going to happen once. You've got to do it. You've got to get there. You're going to see your family. There's going to be memories that you hold on to for the rest of your life. So you, I mean, I know you might be broke. You might not have the money, but you've got to make yeah, it work. What's the gift? You go, are you going to, is she going to get them a super gift or just, no, you know, I just like, take what you've just I the, think the ceramic being there wood enough is yeah, yeah. yeah. being there enough. The Selvos thing. That yeah, that, up. yeah, 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 yeah. H, go to a truck stop. A what? Yeah, go a to truck a truck stop. stop. You can catch a truck on the way back. They've We're always got Arizona room. Now. They've always got <laughs> always got room for a passenger. Do we have truck stop? Yeah, of course we do. Yeah. Oh, we of course do. we do. Okay. Get a um, get a Australia. get a lovely wedding present, a gift voucher from a shop in Perth. They won't be able to use it, so then you might be able to cash it in unless they come over from Sydney. 
seriously, save the money, go to the wedding, support the family, have a good time, buy them a present. Yeah, don't bother about oh, thinking about whether you should be seeing it. Oh, of course you can afford it. You, you can, can always can afford, afford, afford it. She wants to afford it. They're asking for cash because they want a nice honeymoon. That's it. Probably. It's or fine. put a deposit on don't whatever. Don't have a wedding, just have a gathering. Don't have a big wedding no, no. where you've got to the, pay the wedding's food already, and flowers. That's already done. That's not within his power, her power. She's being invited. Save Take the, the gift that you've go. got. It's the thought that counts. Go and have a good time and Absolutely. buggy your sister. Save Knitting needles go. are skift. Knitting needles. That's it. Nice Arrange gift. those words. Whatever. Whatever. When we come back, we're going to be talking about gender diversity in the workplace and whether you have to pay too much attention to it. Don't go away. More of Sweet and Sour coming up. See you soon. What's a gender diversity? I love potato crisps. And I once asked an airline pilot what were her favourite potato crisps. And she said, plain. Time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. Big audience tonight. Here we go. Letter three. Dear panel, can somebody please tell me why it is that we now need sexual diversity policies for the workplace? I'm in my 50s, and the one thing I learned early is that when it comes to the workplace, people are judged only on their ability to do the job. That's where it starts, and that's where it finishes. Every piece of government policy that has become law regarding discrimination in the workforce, I've been a huge supporter because it has reinforced the notion that it's only ever about the ability to do the job. We can't discriminate on the basis of age, gender, disability, etc. Now I'm being told that I may have to forget that solid approach in favour of developing policies for sexual diversity in the workplace. I have no interest in developing such policies. Great music. In my business, my policies ensure there's no discrimination. I ask all employees not to bring their private lives to work and I expect them to demand as much of me. I ask everyone to have mutual respect and I treat everyone equally. So why now do I have to begin discriminating for a diversity that's already comfortably in the workforce? Is this political correctness gone mad? Will this stupid idea pass into legislation? Is there something I'm missing in all of this? Eddie, now we're going to have to start creating policies for diversity. Is it already there? Is there something else we need to be doing? It's already been put in place. This is why we have these laws now, because there was so much discrimination going on in workplaces before these laws were put in place. Um, sexism, racism, um, Archie, I think that um, you're 50 years old, um, the age, gender, disability, discriminating on these things, it's something that we're all thrown into the workplace with and um, I, I think that you need to get over it. Um, uh, do we need to do any more? I don't think do anything we need else to, needs to be done. Do we need to have sexual... Do what are we missing? Why is there a move in um, the sectors that are aware of all of this, that we have to be moving towards satisfying this, this area in the workplace? I think it's getting too far. It, come, it gets to a point where um, the, um, too many people are, are pushing things too far. Harry, help me out here. To, um, oh, look, Harry, I think, help yeah, me out absolutely. here. Absolutely, no worries at all. Look, <laughs> the, 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 um, the thing is, is that you just need balance. Whatever, whatever, whatever policies they're bringing in, they need balance. We can't be all one side or the other side or whatever the case is. Mutual oh, respect. Do we have sides in all of this? Oh, of course we do. That's, that's the, why... The, that's only, the question mark that I've got in all of this is uh, are we discriminating against transgender people? And I think that's the point of all this exercise because, you know, male and female have their toilets. Trans, transgender, I've seen in the news, what do they do? What toilets do they go to? Um, I don't know. It, it, does it start and finish there? Are there are other issues, you know, how how people are relating to transgender people, you know, I don't know. Well, I think they did. All it needs to, all it needs to happen is, is that people need to sit down, discuss it, work out where a transgender's toilet is, whether it's male, female or transgender toilet, we might need to create an all-new toilet altogether for them. Have you been to Europe? They don't actually discriminate anymore between male and female toilets. There's, it's a toilet. It's That's a it. toilet. It's a cubicle on its own. You mean just you like it is toilet. at home? <laughs> just, like, just like it. Come on in, Glenn. It's interesting, isn't it, Archie? Just uh, like it you is have at no home. interest in developing such policies in your business. My policies ensure there is no discrimination. Your policies ensure you are a jerk off. Uh, because wouldn't you want? Why wouldn't people bring their private lives to work? 
The way it works in business these days is people are more engaged and more connected with the work that they do if they're able to feel valued as a person. And it's always interesting the person that uses the term, oh, political correctness. Well, to me, it's just correctness. And if you've never had to deal with it, that's why you're able to use the term political correctness. But if you've been on the other side and happen to be a little bit different and happen to be discriminated against, who's going to fight for you? So, Archie, I think this is a great opportunity to turn things around um, in your life and in general and open your mind to discrimination um, because you've obviously never suffered the hands of discrimination, otherwise you wouldn't be worried. Vote one, Ooh. Glenn. <laughs> Alex, Whoa, come yeah. on. Oh, it's something humorous. Glenn. Ali McBeal, remember? Yeah. <laughs> Ali well, McBeal toilets. Well, I've been discriminated quite a few times in the workplace. Um, especially in government departments, even though they have policies where you're not supposed to discriminate. How long ago was this? Um, 2014. Okay. Ooh. And that's why I'm Relatively so glad recently. I don't work in the government offices anymore, because it's whoever's there, they don't discriminate purposely, but they do it in a way that they can't get in trouble. I got, I had it, um, what was it called? It was Not called a perfect environment. Exclusive bullying, um, exclu I was excluded, exclusive bullying. Um, there was a guy that would ask everyone in the office, would you like a coffee? I'm going to get one. Would you like one? And everyone, you were left out. And he wouldn't ask me and I'd go, what the hell is that? And so um, I felt very out of place. It's a terrible feeling when you're getting discriminated that way. Also, I mean, back in the day, sexual discrimination was rife in offices, you know, like, so, Mad men. In a way, yeah, in a way, I've never seen that. No, it's, oh. That's a great documentary. But uh, in a way, um, <laughs> I think it's just going a little bit too far, and you've got to have relations with people at work. You don't know, you like, want people to feel good when they come to yeah, work? Yeah, you? you don't. You want them if to feel like goblins, they can be themselves and be valued. Do you like this letter to give away the pair no. of limited edition? I do. So I got serious for a change, <laughs> Gary, and that doesn't normally happen. So you want to give away the pair of limited I'm, edition sunnies to this person? Look, who is I, it? Who is it? It's Archie of Glenelg in South Australia. Uh, well, I think if he wants to hide himself in him shame, uh, then he should get the sunglasses. <laughs> you don't want to give him Otherwise, one. I agree with what everyone else says. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you like, Alex? I'm going to go for letter two because then that What's letter two? The Tell wedding. wedding. Yeah. The wedding. Yeah. The wedding. You can wedding. give that as a present. You like the, the wedding? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Eddie, yeah, which one do you like? I think yeah. it's Lorraine. Lorraine needs to hide out at the wedding. Harry? Lorraine, sunglasses, an ideal wedding gift. Yep. Three for the wedding. Four for the wedding? Yeah, yeah. four for the wedding. Four for the wedding. Coming out to Lorraine of Westminster in Western Australia. You know there's a bias that we have. We tend to send them to Western Australian people because it saves us on postage. Mm, it. Oh gosh, the credits are rolling already. We've do got people to still it. use the post. Of course they do. Oh, no, 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 yes they do. Oh, Come on, the, pen the pensioners yes, they do. do because they How get are your a shares subsidy. in Australia post going. Oh, <laughs> they, they, they cut, they cut out that good, parcel thing where you had to pay to pick up your parcel. Thank God, God for that. Uh, no, no, I wonder. Too. Imagine. Everything's changing. Good night, Glenn. Good night, guys. Thanks for having me. Nice to Always a pleasure. Good night, Al. Good night, Gary. <laughs> Good night, Al. Eddie, nice to see you again, huh? Thanks, Mitch. We'll see you again soon? Yeah, I'd love to. What about Johnny? Where's Johnny lately? Oh, he's loitering. <laughs> he's, in, he's in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we're bringing don't, Johnny back. Don't don't it, bring Johnny back. It, it, does Johnny want Possible to campaign. Johnny Johnny bring Johnny there. back. Johnny's Possible there. campaign. H, nice to see you again, oh. sir. Always a pleasure. Please, please bring Always us some good news. Next to Eddie. No what deal. about the rest of us? We've got to no go. Deal. Thank all of our wonderful panelists. Thank That's our it. terrific crew here. And That's it. Are we TAFE? Are we Central TAFE? Are we the Central Institute? We don't know. We'll find out. We are the Central you Institute of TAFE. <laughs> thank we will you educate all you. for having us at home tonight. Good night, Australia. Yeah. Come on, Australia. Your we wait all. That's it. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.